let's I want to pause just a little bit and tell why don't you tell people how to find the site because we're going to deal into some of these things because thank you this is a cool thing here this is this is there's nothing wrong and I'm jealous of anybody who can start their own lacrosse club and make money uh, that can sell sporting goods I'm that's awesome but there are so many but that is a small portion of what we get from youth and collegiate sports. Yep. And this is just a very different example of it's entrepreneurial, but it is not, um, it's definitely not typical, but it is needed. So I'm going to let you um, give a little info on the company yep. um, or company, the organization, and then get into some of the things like your map, uh, map ambassadors. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you. And I appreciate the support. And I think, I think, uh, I, I appreciate the sport because it's a, definitely an interesting topic and we get people giving us all sorts of unique looks and uh, saying unique things when we tell them what we're doing. And um, once we kind of offer the perspective, I think it makes a, a little bit more sense and kind of paint the picture. So, you know, the party's called the, the Modern American Party. And uh, Jane and I founded it uh, in December here in Lexington, Kentucky, although it's kind of been kind of a, just a lifelong project that I had been working on as an individual and Jane and I had been working on as an individual. And when we both met in New York city, uh, over a mutual friend saying, you guys seem like you seriously want to do some crazy stuff and make a difference. So I, I want you guys to meet and, and meet over a cup of coffee. And that was October of 2016, right before the presidential election. And I was going through New York, working in Harlem and then corporate America. And then, getting involved in politics because my big thing is like, if you see the problem, you're more than likely the solution. And I think it's so easy to talk to talk, but it's where make it hard to walk the walk and say, so I said, okay, if politics is messed up, let me go get involved. Let me go see what the deal is with this stuff. And let me see if I can make a difference. And I quickly realized politics in New York city is a heck of a beast. And, um, I felt like through my experience, in Harlem and through my experience in the political world that it was just, there's, there, there's a better way to do politics right now, clearly. And it's time to offer a fresh, new, innovative perspective in the political arena. And Jane and I met and sparks flew romantically, which was, which was amazing. And then at the same time, we're like, Oh my gosh, we're two young, crazy kids who actually want to start a new party. And I think, that's what we're doing. We're starting a political party for the people that feel underrepresented by the current parties and that are just ready for a new perspective in the political arena that's focused on supporting value-based leaders that want to run for the right reasons and, most importantly, solve the right problems the right way. And that's what you and I have been talking about, doing it the right way. And so um, you can find us on our website. It's www.themodamerican.com. And we're kind of just a little baby right now. We're, uh, we got it up and running a couple of months ago, and we've been doing some speaking engagements on campus and um, starting to partner with some groups to get involved in the education world and just being very thoughtful about what we're doing. And we know that the political arena is a hot <laughs> area right now, and uh, there's a lot of tension. So our thing is, like, we want to listen. We want to learn. We want to we wanna surround ourselves with people who believe in this and, and, and empower them to take ownership of this because – we're not a party that's like, hey, Jane Wyatt founded it. It's like, no, this is founded by Americans for Americans to move our country forward. And I think people enjoy that and people want to have a say in it. And so we say we're, we're innovative in terms of we infuse technology into the political arena. You know, nothing crazy for now, but, you know, crowdfunding for, for candidates and Venmo for donations and, you know, focus on electronic voting and all these things that could just make the process so much easier um, we're transparent, so we're very upfront with everything we're doing. We broadcast everything we do in terms of policy conversations. Um, we have monthly co conference calls with any any supporters that want to be involved with it. Um, and, and so we're transparent and we're innovative and uh, we're collaborative. The last one is is important. We we want every American to get involved with this thing. And I, I think if you sat at a dinner table, and that's what Jay and I do, we call them generations dinners, and we sit at the table with people from all walks of life and we just have a conversation, and the majority of the time it leads to politics. And I think, especially now in the world of politics, it always leads back to politics. And um, people have good answers <laughs> to how to fix this country and to fix certain issues. And a lot of time it's not 
anything that's going to you know make the earth shake. It's one or two adjustments towards the system that I think could really work, except they just don't. We don't have a platform anymore that listens to Americans and carries out public service to provide those Americans with an opportunity to live a better tomorrow. And I think that's what we're missing out on. I think that's what our party is really focused on. So I'll chop it at that, but we're a baby right now and we're, we're loving this journey and we're, we know it's a crazy one, but it's needed. And no one said it's a bad idea. Everyone just said it's going to be really hard. And that's what Jay and I are doing is we're preparing ourselves and surrounding ourselves with great people and knowing that um, when you quote unquote disrupt anything, let alone the most powerful engine ever assembled, which is American democracy, um, people are going to be skeptical. But I think the climate is right. The temperature feels good and people are ready for a new journey. And we're excited to present it to them and let them do what they want to do with it. Yeah. And I'll tell you that I was just thinking back to uh, when I saw you had moved and you're starting the new party that the, exactly what you just, just said people say to you is what I thought, which is that's such a great idea. <laughs> And it's going to be hard. Yep. Um, now, most people just say, well, that's crazy because that'll never work. Well, right. things are different. I mean, there are more people now that, you know, will talk about how, um, you know, the idea that it's, you have to pick a party is difficult because I believe in the last couple elections, it's gone from 35 to 45, even 50 percent of people that even though they might be registered because that's the only way you can vote in the primaries, right? Um, they're really not party affiliated. And if you do quick math, um, that tells you that the two main parties are actually minority shareholders. Right. And where people want to go. So it's it is it's all about a swing vote and swing states really just show right. which way do the swing voters happen to be leaning most of the time. That's really what it is. So, um, yeah, I, I do like, uh, that, um, what is your sanity project newsletter? <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, it's, it's a newsletter. We just, uh, we felt like people are so exhausted by normal, just, Hey, here's the map newsletter. We decided to, you know, our whole thing, our mission statement, is we want to change the way people think about politics. That's our mission statement now because we think you need to just shift people's mindset about this toxic, angry environment, and you need to start convincing people that you can have a positive conversation with someone who may not have the same opinion about you but maybe wants to solve the problem so they can talk and collaborate. And so um, the Sandy Project is just one of our little ways to change up uh, how we talk about things and we joke around that everyone's losing their sanity everyone's insane around here because i mean rightfully so it looks like everyone's insane so uh, we just said you know we're kind of putting a little sanity back in america one newsletter at a time so trying to just brighten the mood and offer us a, pro a solution to the problem and and uh and just be like hey we're going through this with you guys we're not we're not acting like we have all the answers but we're certainly trying to come up with some of the solutions and we'd love your help yeah, and, um, you know, as you were talking about a few things, I was thinking back to some of the thoughts I've had on, you know, not that this fill in the blank would fix it, but, boy, wouldn't this really shake it up in the right way? And uh, I was reading, uh, you know, you always hear about, well, that's not what the framers intended. That's not the way this country was built. And then you'll hear think, realize some things like, oh, that actually wasn't something that goes back to the 1800s. It was a mid-century right. thing. But something that was part of the original process um, was that both parties, winner and loser, the president, ended up in the White House. One was right. president, the loser got second place. So Vice basically president. both parties, when you got nominated, you were going to be in you know, the executive branch. That's how it have was. You have a say, say in the arena. Right. Can you imagine that right now? It doesn't matter which way you lean. That you yeah. know, people will talk about, you know, well, who's next on deck? You know, it's a little bit of a morbid joke if something happens to the president, or who's the, you know, the president's, um, you know, person to polish things up the way they want. Well, it's not your party. You, re you know, mm -hmm. when somebody's on your sideline looking at your playbook, um, you really would have to be so much more sincere. Um, right. And that's an old, old thing, and I don't see it ever coming around. But when I think about that. 
especially to those who say, well, we just need to make it the way the framers of you know, the Constitution meant. They said, well, you really, right. I go, if this engineer, you know, this nerd can figure that out by reading a book here and there, um, right. you, might, you might want to watch what you wish for because, you know, that really would shake it up. But, no, I, and I, I think it's it's uh, um, it's funny because the founders. I mean, I think I've read. I'm trying to read a book on every president right now. It's like one of my things I'm focused on. So I've started with the founding fathers, and, and they're amazing people. I mean, the concept of them and what they did and how they've done it is is fascinating. But at the same time, you know, George Washington was probably the only one out of all those guys who really didn't believe in in the party system. I mean, although they didn't say it, they write it down. You know, it's power and politics is is a, is a heck of a combination. And Thomas Jefferson and James Madison with the Dems and Alexander Hamilton with the original, you know, Federalists. I think it's like uh, it's 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 eye opening to see that they didn't write it down, but they jumped right on it. But I think the difference was they were they were presenting quality candidates that that had America's best interests yes. in mind. And I think that's what. We've lost. They're like, okay, we really feel strongly, strongly about these views. Let's get this guy. He's the best. And if, unfortunately, it's always guys. We'll, we'll get there. Females for sure. Um, but hey, let's get this guy. Let's support him as much as possible. Let's give him all the support, all the money, all the good intel, all the edu- all the policy, everything he needs. And let's do whatever we can to get him elected. And hey, if we don't win. At the end of the day, we still got a seat in the arena, and I'll take a seat, seat in the arena every single day. My favorite quote in the world is, is Teddy Roosevelt, the man arena. Like, I'll be in that arena fighting the good fight every single day rather than being on the outside looking in, having no idea the direction of the country. And that's, that's why George Washington was so weary of, a politi- uh, of, of parties because he knew what it would lead to. And there's a great book by, by, um, by uh, my buddy John Avalon at the Daily Beast – called Washington's Farewell and it dict- it talks about Washington's farewell address to the nation it was it was the piece of paper for America before um, Abraham Lincoln came around with the Gettysburg address that right. redefined what it meant to be American but Washington's farewell it, you read that book you're like oh my gosh Washington is is a mind reader i mean he he's a he could see the future because he was so accurate with the the issues of the country which is we'd get involved and tangled abroad and then internally, in, inside the country, we would be ensnared with, with, with party politics. And so I think at MAP, just to, to round it out back to MAP, I think, you know, we believe democracy works. I mean, it clearly, for a multitude of reasons, worked in the last election. Um, and the two-party system is fine. I think com- co- competition at the highest level, you know, a national championship game, you don't have 30 teams playing on the same field. You've got two teams. You've got the two best teams at the end of the day, saying, here's my best product, here's your best product, let's go at it, let's fight the good fight, let's not talk to each other and beat the crap out of each other when we're playing, but after the game, we shake hands, we say good game, we congratulate them, and we say, hey, at least we gave it our best, but we're second place, you know, and it's not good enough, and we'll give it another try. And so we think the two-party system is fine. We fun- We believe that the, the both parties are fundamentally broken to do what they're supposed to be doing, which is empowering humans empowering Americans to be the best version of themselves every single day um, to move this country forward. And so that's kind of my last, my just tidbit about the founding fathers and where we are is, is the parties are broken. This, the two party system is working. It just, you, you've got to, you got to mix it up. And so I think the next couple of years are going to be fascinating in a good and bad way in, in politics. I think it's one of the most important political climates in the history of this country and which is saying something and i think it's going to be very interesting to see what happens and we're going to do our thing which is connect with people and empower individuals and quickly you, you brought the map ambassadors before and i just want to touch on them because i appreciate you bringing that up um those are people that work around the country and they partner with us and they are kind of our eyes and ears in their respective geographic location so right now we've got about 30 map ambassadors it's ambassadors we just put map in front of it uh who, who put it up on their LinkedIn, who tell their family and friends that, hey, 
you know, I, I'm not 100% sure what the future of this thing holds, but right now it feels good and, and I want to help them. And so they get involved in policy conversations with us. They travel, they meet us at our headquarters here in Kentucky. They get to spend time with us, talk about policy, strategic planning. Um, and then most importantly, they're finding candidates for us out there that are new, transparent, innovative, collaborative leaders that we want to be a part of. And right now what we do is we endorse those candidates and we say, hey, these people are people that are, are running under the map value.